Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. We have another Bolo video today. Today, we're going to talk about electric toasters. Don't blow this off as of yet. Wait and hear it out. Wait and see what I'm talking about. There's toasters that go for $500, $600, even up to $1,000 for a toaster. And they don't always have to be vintage to be worth money. There's new ones that are coming out now, designers and things as well. But we're going to talk about them right now, and we're going to head on over to the screen. So this is toasters. I know that may sound strange. Toasters have been around since probably the 1880s, 1890s in some way, shape, or form. Um, electric toasters were inevitable just for the modern house didn't have a place to like toast them over a fireplace or use wrought iron or cast iron items to toast your bread. So that's when these came in. This is one of the earliest examples that you're going to run into. This one actually has a little damage. It's missing one of the bone or Bakelite um, handles right there. Now there's a couple different versions of these. Some are bronze looking, some are chrome. Um, some have different actual attachments for the buttons and the actual knobs. I'll just show you a few. This is one of the highest dollar ones, $575. And this one works. This is chrome. Here's another one. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much the same thing, but there are some different aspects of each one. The cord itself um, shows up sometimes on its own, as does the actual toaster without a cord. So just keep that in mind. The parts and pieces sell in this as well. Like this one here looks, yeah, this one here has a newer cord. That cord is way newer than the actual toaster from what I see here. This one's really nice. Again, it depends on the actual model and the version as to how high it goes. Sometimes there's different maker marks on the bottom that as well could also change it. You can see how it swings out here. The toast would slide into that little part and then you'd close it. Rather unique and interesting in my personal opinion. So again, 275 on this one. These are heavy too, so you see $25 shipping. It's coming from California, so you know, shipping's fairly expensive. Here's just another example, $188. And you can see this one's in the shape of a heart, and that's why it's heart-shaped flip rotating toaster. You actually have to flip the actual things around and then it'll toast the other side of the actual bread. So it's like a mechanical one to some extent. $188 on that one. Now this category, we're going to go into new ones too. I've literally got these organized by era. So you can see them oldest to the newest. When we get to the end, you're going to see some other possibilities in toasters such as RA or even wholesale deals on these also. So obviously you're not going to wholesale these vintage ones. But again, this is one of those areas that you can find in all different sorts of places. Thrift stores, antique malls flea markets, garage sales, um, live auctions, estate sales, as I said, of course, um, and many other places too. You can go to a wholesale business and run into some toasters. Toasters are in most households, so there is a, a market for these. They sell on Amazon. You know, they sell across the board. Toasters are something that I look for as well in any way, shape, or form. RA, again, toasters as well. And I'm going to show you a few specific items that a few years ago you could have RA'd. So 175 on this one here. This is a floral base. It actually has a porcelain base or enamel maybe in this case. It doesn't really matter if the cord is there or not on these. There are newer versions that will fit these old ones so they can still use them. There's not much technology to a toaster. It's just a coil basically that when electricity flows through it, it gets red hot, heats up, and that's what toasts the toaster. So, And that's pretty much any toaster is made that way. There are some maybe some new toaster ovens that might be a little different, but a household toaster like this are all the same. The coils or the actual elements, wires that heat up may be in a different shape in a different spot, but it's it's again the same thing. 175. Again, we're going through the ages as these are up here. So I've tried to categorize them by when they were made. I may be off on like this one here. I wasn't 100% sure. I've only run into one or two of these in my life. So they're not super rare um, and they don't sell for a ton of money, but they just don't show up. They're, they're not as desirable because they're not very nice looking. This one here, the, the actual sides open up. It's just a wire side. And then you slide the bread in on that side and then the side closes up. I've played with one of these before. Most of these early ones uh, still actually work for the most part as well. 
Here's a porcelain blue willow. Now they made these to match your dishes. So when it was sitting on a table or on a buffet or something, your dishes would be around there and they'd pretty much match the setup. These type are some of the rarest ones that you can find, especially if it's a pattern one that actually is a standardized pattern that they made dishes and china and plateware for. This one's $433, 33 bids on this one here. If it was me, I probably would have put this one up for $750 as a bin with BO and not even messed with the auction. I would have probably been able to get $500, maybe $600 out of it. When you do the auction, it's just a willing of who's going to pay that for it. But when you do a bin, they don't know what it could go for. That's the plus on a bin. No one knows how high it could go for. So if you put it at 1000 you may be expecting to only get four or 500 out of it. But the person who's actually making an offer might think, hey, it might actually go for $800. I haven't seen one this nice in a while. So that's the ploy on bins. And that's why bins work most of the time. And another aspect on that most people don't want to wait the length of time, seven or 10 days. They just want to have it and know it's there. Again, because so many other times, another one will pop up as well too. So while you're running an auction, if someone else puts one up while the auction's going on as a bin, it could undercut you immediately and then you're dead. As a bin, you always have the chance for someone to make an offer on it for you. So that's just my take on it. Other people do well in auctions. Some items, again, I do sell at auctions, but they're very scarce and rare. This one, it would have been borderline whether I would have run this one as an auction or not. Now, the next one here is a Hostess Sandwich Toaster. You would put a sandwich in there and toast it. This is a fancy one. You can see the porcelain. Same kind of plug attachments as all of the other ones. Most of these still work when you find them. You can sanitize these and clean them, and people still actually use these in their kitchen. So, 140 bucks. This one doesn't go for as much being a porcelain one just because of the construction. This isn't technically a normal toaster. This was actually for like a grilled cheese sandwich style, like um, a hot pocket style of sandwich. So just keep that in mind. 140. The construction and what it was used for is different. This is a hostess maker, basically. A sandwich again, as I said. So that's the difference. Next one here is an oddball one. Some people mix this one up without the cord as being some kind of weird actual cigarette um, ashtray. Not the case, obviously, but this one isn't as desirable as some, but it still goes for a decent amount of money. I've only run across or even seen one of these a couple of times in my life. It was out of my price range for the profit I could have made off of it. These used to go for a lot of money, way more than this years back, but they're just not as desirable. They're harder to clean up. They just don't look as nice. They're not chromed for the most part. Still 250 bucks. You can't really knock the price. Here's another odd one. Again, what you want to look for to tell age on some of these is actually the cord. If it has cloth or fiber on the outside of the cord, it's usually worth looking into, if not getting, if it's cheap enough. This one has a lever and then it opens up like a clam. I've seen a couple of these too. I've had one of these before. I got like 150 or 160 out of mine, which is about average as you can see here. You have to clean most of these type up. So if it's not very nice looking or it's uncleanable, I wouldn't mess with a toaster that's vintage unless it's really old like the first few we showed you, the sweetheart one. So this one here again, most of it's stainless steel, so it is cleanable. There is some really good polishes out there that you can do. And again, I would spend the time to do that. If the cord's bad too, and most of these are pull-out cords where you can interchange them, I would seek out another cord on some of these to sell a little better. I've in the past actually bought a cord off of line just to sell with my toaster, which increased the value of my toaster, even with the investment in the cord. Just like VCRs, Nintendos, and things like that, I always try to have the cord just like a TV with a remote. They sell better. Or a DVD player with a remote. They sell better. Same thing goes for cords with toasters. Here's another early one. This is Catalin or Bakelite um, plastic, early plastic, I guess you could call it. And it's hard to tell the difference on what the material is sometimes unless you've looked at hundreds of those pieces in the past. So just take that into mind here on these. Just another perfect example, the oddball styles of toasters that you will find. Bakelite or, or Catalin, any of those go for some good money, no matter what it is, just like radios. And they do crack. As you can see, there's a nice long crack. That's what you'll see. And, and a lot of those are repaired. A lot of these cement and plastic glues that you can find actually will work on these as well, too. I wouldn't personally repair anything like this at all. I would sell it in the pieces and include the pieces and let somebody else repair it. If you repair it wrong, you could hurt the value. The person could send it back because of the repair. There are ways to repair these where it's almost invisible to see the actual repairs. And people will send these off sometimes. 350 on this one. 
Here's a German one. Again, this is basically like a sandwich or almost like a waffle press to some extent. Mostly sandwiches would have went in this. There's U.S. versions of this as well. So I wouldn't have any problem selling this. This is an interesting piece. It's got a recipe on it too on what to do. So it's not necessarily a, a military one, so to speak. So anyway, 330 on that one. Now we're going into the more modern mid mod century era. Most of these Art Deco ones go very well if they work. And again, they have to look nice. You're not going to sell a, a rusted out version of one or a dented one or a scratched one or one where the finish is just terrible, especially in this price range. This is almost perfect looking. I've looked at this one pretty closely too. They, they clean this one up for sure, but they did an awesome job or they just got luckier than I could imagine because it's that clean when they got it. $202. Again, this is something I would have probably put up for $3,350 as a bin. You put it up as you wish, but bins just sell better for the most part across the board on stuff like this. This isn't rare enough, in my personal opinion, to have done it as an auction, just because there's so many other examples of this one that shows up. If I can tie it down with, say, 50 other listings, it's not worth it for me to do as an auction, because I can just mark it up higher than all the auctions and still come out ahead 90% of the time or better. Now, this type is my favorite. I, I love these toasters. If I run into one, it's, it's going to be kept here if it still works. The toast actually drops down a chute and lands at the bottom when you click the lever. That's the neatest part of this one here. I thought that was really ingenious. It reminds me of some of the conveyor belt ones, like in restaurants. I've got a long career with restaurants and, and selling restaurant supply stuff. So anyway, this is a pretty interesting one, 150 bucks. Most of the ones from, say, even 50s and 60s, if it has the box, still goes for some good money. Sunbeam always seems to sell higher than most. Most of the Sunbeam will still work no matter what. They're stainless steel. They clean up nicely. They're still usable radiant control systems here. These are really nice ones here. I do run into them in the boxes, and they still go for little money, even at sales, because most people don't think a toaster is worth a lot of money. They won't realize by looking at it in a box like that sometimes that it's that old or that it has that much of a value. Toasters are something I usually get fairly cheap, other than the first model I showed you with the heart-shaped one in it. Most of the other ones, like these style anyway, the mid-mod century, go really reasonably priced, and you can turn around and flip them pretty well. 280 as I said on this one. Here's just another one. This is a toastalator. This is a known one. You're going to find a bunch of these on there. You're going to have to just look into toasters in general to realize which ones are worth money and which ones aren't. It's a rather interesting design on this one here. It kind of slides it out by the side. Just another example of just ingenuity at the time. Nothing really special about any of these toasters. They all do the same thing, but the, the mechanics of a toaster can help increase the value. If it does something different, opens up like a clam or swivels or spins, any of that kind of stuff is unique for a toaster and increases the value. Here's another mid-mod century one here. Just another perfect example. Again, most of these are still usable. One thing, too, on a lot of these earlier ones, they don't have any place to catch the crumbs. So there's no tray or anything on the bottom. Modern ones at least have something. You may have to shake them out in the sink or something at some point, but that's one of the drawbacks I've always run into on these old vintage ones. I test a lot of them. If I get a toaster in, I'm going to test it before I sell it. It's always going to sell more if it works and you can show it working in my book. I usually try to show the actual elements lit. That's just my take on it. 190 bucks. Now we're going a little newer here. This is 60s. You can tell even in the 70s, there's dishes that match this almost to the T. It's not the same exact pattern, but it's very darn similar. It has the same colors anyway. A lot of the atomic versions or like North Star or something have that same blue. Um, North Star is a pattern that literally has like starbursts in it. It's made by several different companies. Salem makes it. But this is very similar to some of the Salem potteries for a perfect example. So $193. This isn't a super, super rare one. You'll find several of these up on eBay at any given time. Maybe one or two a month of these sell straight through at a decent price. There may be a few more than that even up. I haven't looked at these specific models in a while. And they have it works, too. That is a key in these. Here's just another mid-mod century pop-up toaster. Um, pop-up toasters came into existence at a certain point, and some of the first models of pop-up toasters seem to go for better money. Here's just an example of one of the earlier ones. Toastmaster's still around today, so again, they've been making toasters for a long time. 60 years, maybe. 189. 
Here's just another Toastmaster. Under the cabinet toasters, these toaster ovens sell all the time, even when they're semi-dated looking. I don't understand why or what they do with them. Um, there's some, obviously, some mid-mod century ones that are chrome that sell that are mounted under, and newer ones. Most any mountable under cabinet toaster seems to sell. So if you're seeing them in RA items, it's something worth looking at and looking into. So as we've approached this era, again, there, there are RA items and RA abilities on these. I look for toaster ovens all the time. Even if it's new, if I can buy it in bulk at a wholesale company and flip them, it's always better. They sell better in the winter months, but you can sell them all year round. Under cabinet ones are always good. Always good for almost anything like this. Here's a Disney one. So this is a perfect example of RA items. RA these. You can RA them. You can wholesale them as well, too. You'll have a receipt if you're doing wholesale, so you will be ungated to sell a Disney brand item in many cases. So take that into consideration. There are toasters for every type and design of things. Now, this toaster here actually puts Winnie the Pooh's face on the toast. So, and they do them for all kinds of stuff. I'm going to show you a few other ones as well here of this. Again, RA, RA items and wholesale items, just like this. This is a perfect example. Something I might spend five or 10 bucks, maybe 15 at an auction, or on a wholesale deal, I might be able to get these, say, for 30 or so bucks a piece if I buy a couple hundred of them. So, just keep that in mind when you're doing these. Here's a VW bus. Just another example. Now, this one comes in several different colors. I've had a pink one before. I've seen um, like this turquoise green blue one here. I think there's four different colors. There's a couple different versions, too, of this. I don't know if there's like an original one and then now somebody's knocking them off or it's the same company who has reissued these. But there's a couple different car ones that I've run into. 155 bucks on this one. Here's Battlestar Galactica. So just another example. Again, it embeds into the toast itself, the image. This one lights up with the eye for the actual Cylon. To me, that's not a Cylon. To me, a Cylon is the actual original one from the 70s and 80s, personally. I grew up on that. So and I loved the voice-changing sound that the Cylons make. So again, this is limited quantity, but there are some that are made in quantity where you can find hundreds of them at wholesale deals. So just look out for stuff like this. Any toaster that makes a image on the toast are always worth getting. Any of them, as long as they're cheap enough. Now here's another one. This is a Dolce & Cabana by Smeg, and I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, but it's just another perfect example of some of these designer and high-end ones. This one went for $500. Again, you might find this at auction, you might find it at a garage sale, you might find it at a flea market. People don't look up everything, believe it or not. If something was given to somebody as a gift, they don't always think about the value in it. And here's just another Smeg uh, one here. This is a chrome modernized one. They sold two of these for $194. It's new in box. So again, these are chrome. These are high-end kitchen appliances for the most part. So keep an eye out for stuff like this. Know the brands. There's more than just this brand here that sell for some good money. So again, this is one of those areas that has many different types of things you could sell in it. The vintage, the mid-mod century, the chromes, the usable pieces, the under-the-counter ones for even like new home construction, the vintage ones that go under the counter, the bigger ones, the design ones. And then you have like uh, character ones that actually embed on the toast. And then you've got RA and wholesale deals on these as well. But that's what I have for you. Well, there you go. There's another item that I do look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts on it. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.